In this lecture, presented by www.free-academy.com, we're going to be learning about optimization. Optimization is using our lessons and finding the maximums and minimums of functions to solve practical problems. This is one thing that's really, really nice about some of your introductory calculus lessons is that sometimes you actually learn how to solve real-world problems, stuff that you might actually come across. And this is a pretty basic one, naturally, because we're just learning the subject. And I'm going to teach this to you by solving this problem. I'll do lots of other practice problems on the site, so you have plenty of reference to. And wherever I can, I'm going to give you some general advice about solving these. But these are really hands-on and practical, so every single one's a little bit different. The problem that we have is we have enough concrete to build a 200-foot foundation for a barn. We want to find the largest area that that barn can have given our limited resources on concrete. Before we do anything on this problem, I'm going to give you your first tip. First tip, always identify as many things mathematically as you can from the word problems, because these are always going to be word problems. And one thing you saw right here is we have 200 feet of concrete. So that means our perimeter of this barn is going to be 200 feet. And if that isn't immediately clear, just be aware that that's more awkward wording than anything else. And that's another challenge you have to deal with in word problems, which I'm sure you guys are all familiar with. So we know our perimeter is 200 feet. We also know the equation for trim perimeter. That's 2x plus 2y for a rectangle like we have here. What else do we know? We also know the equation for the area. That's length times width, which in this particular problem is x times y. Is this enough information to solve the problem? Mm, don't really know. But, well, I know, but let's, uh, let's solve as much as we can and see if we come to the answer. And if we can't, then we go back and see if we can figure some other things out. We have an equation x, y, and then we also have the equation for the perimeter where we have x and y. Let's get x, or let's get y in terms of x. So 200 equals 2x plus 2y. Uh, we'll just divide a two, both sides by 2, get 100 equals x plus y. y equals 100 minus x. Let's put that into our area equation now. And our area is going to equal x times 100 minus x. Distributing that through. And we get the area equals 100x minus x squared. Now recall, uh, we're applying maximums and minimums. We're going to need to find a maximum or minimum. We know how to do this. We're going to take the derivative of a with respect to x, which is going to give us 100 minus 2x equals 0, which once we solve, we get x equals 50. But there's a little bit more to it than just x equals 50. Remember, when we take the derivative and set it equal to 0, we find what the local maximums or local minimums are. We don't find the global maximums or minimums. In this case, we have a 200 foot perimeter. And that means in the most extreme cases, we could have, a, we could have no x, we could have no width, we could have just all length. So x, so zero is one of our extreme values. Then we have 50 which we solve for in the equation. And at the other extreme, we have x as our entire width, or, and we have absolutely no length. So x would equal 100. And you can see here, if we cross out the y, put in 100 for x, we'd get 200. Now, you're all perceptive people, and you can immediately tell that if we had absolutely 
no width, x equals 0, or absolutely no length, x equals 100, that we wouldn't have much for area. So by inspection, we can rule out 0 and 100. But to be thorough, to be mathematical and thorough and everything, we would need to plug this into our equation now that we have three volumes. Or now, now that we have uh, three different values for x, we plug those into our area equation, and we see which one gives us our maximum value, and in turn our answer. So starting now with x equals 0, our equation for the area becomes 0 times y, which equals 0. For x equals 50, we have 50 using the equation that I just erased where y equals 100 minus x, we get that y equals 50. And that gives us, what is it, 2,500. And then f equals 100, or x equals 100, we get 100 times 0, which equals 0. So there's clear favorite here, and it occurs when x equals 50, and in turn y equals 50. That's our maximum area. That's basically a very, very simple example about how optimization works. Like I said, uh, take your word problem, find all the values you can, and put them into all the formulas you can, start putting things together, isolating variables, and then ultimately you're going to take a derivative of one of your equations and find the extreme of values on it. Do some more practice problems for you guys, get the hang of this. Hope this was helpful.